But for now, tonight, we've got a studio full of great guests ready to take us into the weekend. We're joined by the stars of last year's most watched new drama, Beyond Paradise, which returns to our screens tonight. We're going to be chatting to Chris Marshall and Dylan Llewellyn shortly. And someone who's no stranger to the old smash, we're talking Blackadder and the young ones, to name a few. Ben Elton is going to be here to tell us why he's taking to the road for the first time in five years. Yeah, we'll be joined by the artist that everybody is talking about, singer Benson Boone, who's just taken away the number one spot from Beyonce. I'm not mad at him, though. It's fine. Uh, here's the moment he heard about it. Announced to the nation on Radio 1 in our very own green room. Ariana Grande, we can't be friends. Benson, you've done it! Oh, let's go! <laughs> That's my first UK number one. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. And Benson will be performing beautiful things live for us later on in the show. We right now, it's time to welcome our guests. It's the crime busters from Beyond Paradise, Chris Marshall and Dylan Llewellyn, and the self-proclaimed godfather of stand-up, Ben Elton. <laughs> <laughs> Either. <laughs> um, now, but sadly, the latest series of Death in Paradise finishes on Sunday, but the good news is Beyond Paradise is back tonight. Now, Chris, it was the most watched drama of last year, which is pretty amazing. Uh, without any spoilers, what can we expect from the new series? Uh, well, lots more fun, you know, lots more um, uh, great sort of Southwest England type um, crimes for the, for the team to solve. Uh, We've got um, a murder on a steam train. We've got a, a local fishing legend who goes missing from a fishing trawler. Uh, we've got a teacher that goes missing as well. A lot of missing people. A lot, a lot, right. a lot of missing, a lot of missing people. Well, well look, uh, thankfully, this video isn't missing. Let's take a look. <laughs> should we have a police station? Let's try and crack this case, shall we? <laughs> One of those people in there really is the murderer. <laughs> One of the fishing boats has reported a body lost at sea. You are priceless. You'll make splendid foster parents. We just both really want this to work, whatever it takes. It's a plot thickens. Very good. Yeah. Now, Dylan, series one, right, PC Kelby, a little bit bumbling. Is it more of the same? How is he faring now? No, I, I think so. I, I, yeah, I think he's pretty confident in himself, though. Yeah. Good, good. He's just a bit... He's a bit naive. He, he doesn't understand when people good. are, like, taking the mickey out of him. Sure. He's, yeah, he's in his own world, but, yeah, he's, he's, he's giving Golden Retriever energy. Uh, that mm. is the perfect definition. Truly, Golden Retriever love. energy, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, now, D.I. Humphrey's got quite an unorthodox approach. Has Kelby got used to him in this series, would you say? Especially in those sort of, like, you know, Eureka, we got him, we, yeah. we got their moments. Yeah, he, like, assaults our ears. Like, oh, yeah, he's, he's got, like, real, like... Um, he's just that character. He's so, so um, um, like, colourful, and, and we're just, like, trying to adjust to him. Um, it is kind of, yeah, just, like, the outsider coming into our... Uh, station and um, yeah, it, it's, it's it's brilliant with the the dynamic with with us on the station. It's really yeah. cool. Well, Chris, you have such a, an amazing ensemble in terms of the cast mm. that you get to work with, of course, and on all of these shows. I mean, Death in Paradise and Beyond Paradise. But there's two uh, cast members that I want to bring up. So, in Death in Paradise, you've got Harry the Lizard. Yes. Beyond Paradise, you've got Selwyn the Duck. <laughs> What's easier to work with, duck or lizard? <laughs> Well, well, OK, well, that's a, that's a very pertinent question. Um, <laughs> the, the lizard is my personal term for Harry the lizard. The lizard is not a lizard. Yes. It's a reflective ball, and I'm sorry to... Um, uh, to um, You're breaking hearts here. Break some hearts yeah. here, but, yeah. But it's a reflective ball that you sort of... And then it gets taken away, and then you follow the lizard around, and then the lizard appears in post-production. The duck is real. The duck is real. The duck okay. is real. He has his own trailer. He's, um, <laughs> he's, he's, um, yeah. He and actually, I, I've bonded with the duck. Um, he, he, I stroke the look. You can see me stroking him there. I, I stroke the duck. Um, I, I hang out with the duck. He, he, he comes in my trailer. I go in his. Like, <laughs> his is a little bigger than mine. But uh, yeah, it's um, the duck is. So I think the duck is my favourite. Well, what's Clearly, a murder mystery without a duck? That's exactly. Clearly, well, yeah. a love in this cast. I can feel it radiating from the sofa. Uh, yeah. Now, Ben, uh, you're no uh, stranger to a murder mystery, to uh, writing great fiction, published. Oh, uh, 
Ah, I, well, I think you might be referring to, since I'm apparently the self-proclaimed godfather, I don't think I <laughs> proclaimed it myself. <laughs> uh, but yes, say, I, I hold the... I'm one of the few stand-up comics to, uh, and I don't get to say this very often, uh, to, to have won the Golden Dagger Crime Writer of the Year uh, Award yeah. from the Crime Writers Association. But it was many years ago now. It was a novel I wrote called Popcorn back in 1996. And, uh, yeah, I've put a few murders into various of my novels. I, I, I enjoy working out a whodunit. I, I did one called... Uh, Dead famous a long time ago about a murder set in the in the Big Brother house mm. right at the beginning of the whole Big Brother sort of sensation wow. thing. So yeah, it's a it's a great way, as you as as you know with the Paradise yeah. series, it's a great way to introduce characters. Mm. You know, to yeah. have a lot of fun with the community, and you know you can basically the real drama is the is is the people involved, but you need a you need a hook. And of course, there's nothing, nothing better than a murder yeah. for a, you know to keep everybody focused. Sometimes it well, is a hook. Yeah, <laughs> you could be, yeah. exactly in the, in the library with a hook. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to bring this up because Chris, we actually had uh, Dylan's old Derry Girls co-star Nicola Coughlin on the show this week, and she actually had a message for you. Take a look. When Dylan and I worked on Dairy Girls together, he used to love to come into my trailer in the middle of a day for a little chill on my couch, and we'd watch funny videos together. Did you guys get to do that, or am I making you jealous? <laughs> Do, do, do we do we watch funny videos together? Yeah, and do you guys get to hang out and, I mean, and chill and just you know, I mean, be mainly best friends? We talk about Crystal Palace and Aston Villa. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no time you're hanging out with the duck. Yeah, He's well, like, I'm you know, with the even... duck most yeah. of the time. I'm, like, yeah. I'm, I'm with the duck today. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> Duck, yeah. football, yeah. solving All crimes, trailers, the range. Exactly. Yeah. Very much here in the one Just show. Just keep so the far. orange away from the duck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the wrong game. <laughs> Thank you both. Uh, Beyond Paradise starts tonight at 8 o'clock on BBC One and on iPlayer. And you can also catch up on Series One right there. Yeah, still to come, we have that amazing performance from singer Benson Boone. Can't wait for that one. Now, right, Ben, before we hear why you are hitting the road uh, one more time, let's remind ourselves why we love you so much. <laughs> the avocado theory of economics. It does not seem to have occurred to these splenetic boomers that the reason the millennials and the Zedders have got no houses is not because they've been spending all their money on smashed avocado on sourdough. No! They spend all their money on smashed avocado on sourdough because they have got no chance of ever owning a house, so they might as well have a decent breakfast. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of politics, yeah. yeah. Hey, why not? Uh, now, this week, uh, the nominations for the TV BAFTAs were announced. Congratulations, Dylan. Your fantastic show, Big Boys, has had a nod. And, uh, Ben, it's not your first rodeo. Uh, how does it feel to pick up an award compared to back in the day? And you got one just last year as well. We, yeah, for the revival of uh, Friday Night Live, which was a show, first time we did it in 32 years. And yeah. I certainly lost a lot of hair and what's left has gone a lot greyer. <laughs> yeah, that was it. It was a 30-year drought, BAFTA drought for me. We, I did quite well in the 80s with Blackadder and the young ones, got three. And uh, I always used to hire it because in those days you had to wear the black tie, you know, the yeah. BBC took things very seriously. Mm. And so it was, uh, you know, the dicky bow and all that. And I used to hire it. And then on, on the th third time, I thought, I'm going to buy one because this is silly. I'm spending more money hiring. And Hugh Laurie said to me, You've cursed yourself. You'll never win another BAFTA. Uh, he was wrong, but it did take 32 <laughs> years. But the good news was I was able to wear the same suit. That's, uh, that's not, that's no small achievement. There we yeah, go. Yeah. Sustainable yeah. King. We Big love that. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I, I mean, we have to ask as well. I mean, you've had such a fantastic career, you know, whether or not that, that starring in things, writing things. But why would you get why? Why do you want to go back to stand up? What is it about it that just made you go? Do you know what? I'm going to get back out there. Well, stand up, I, I think, is it is a really great art form. I yeah. don't want to sound pretentious, but I think as a medium for ideas, it, it, it's it, it's a particularly powerful medium. I mean, when you're writing a, a novel and I've done a lot of that and screenplays and, and, yeah. and sitcoms. There's an awful lot else to do, a lot of characters, a lot of plotting, etc. But but stand up is a is a pure polemic. You know, you you basically you're addressing the audience directly, telling them your truth, as we say these days, standing in your truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, I've always, it, it's a it's a very personal thing. It's almost like you know painting a picture or something. So it's it's just. You, the pure of what you want to say, and as you perhaps know, I'm always very interested in the world around me, in a community, and not not everything's political, but everything is interesting, and uh, the world just gets more interesting and more scary, and there seems to be a lot more to bang on, bang on about than there ever was, and seeing the funny side, I think, is a very helpful and useful way of addressing an ever scarier world, and so. 
I was itching to get back on the road because I had so much to say, and that's that's <laughs> why I'm, I'm I'm out there again, all over all over the country in the autumn, doing about sixty dates, which uh, at my age is, is that's incredible, yeah. Yeah. A true soldier. I mean, I've got to talk about what the tour is called. It's based on artificial intelligence. Now, this is something that wasn't around when you were starting uh, your career, yeah. and now we can't escape it. And as somebody who doesn't actually particularly care for AI, why have you based your tour on it? Well, it's not based on it. It's just a joke, really. I mean, all stand-up comedy is seeing the funny, seeing often seeing the stupid. Uh, and, you know, I'm looking around trying to think of a hook to put all the, the general the gear I do about whatever's happening and whatever I'm thinking. And everyone's talking about AI because obviously we're all petrified of artificial mm. intelligence. It looks as if it's going to render humanity redundant. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, why were we? So, why were people so stupid to invent it? And why are we so stupid to let them? You know, oh, great. So how wonderful. It can write a new Beatles song, but it's going to put you out of work. <laughs> it literally is going to do everything for you and humanity will be left without meaning. So for me, the real issue isn't artificial intelligence. It's authentic stupidity. Stupidity. Mm. And that's what the tour's called, Authentic Stupidity, which is us. That's, we're all about it. And the stupidest thing we've done recently is let a bunch of un unaccountable, unelected billionaires in California <laughs> invent a machine that they'll profit from and we'll be put out of work. Well, Can't no. get much stupider than that. I mean, I mean <laughs> that Ben said it. Wow. Uh, well, look, thank you so much. Uh, tickets for Ben's tour are available now. <laughs> Right, a uh, short time ago it was announced that Benson Boone's single Beautiful Thing was the new number one. So let's meet the man himself. It's Benson Boone. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. The best selling single in the UK. Now, Benson, you're about to perform the track for us very, very soon. Um, yeah. This is your first ever UK number one. Has it sunk in yet? No. <laughs> no, um, my I have four sisters and they're all really, really big fans of Beyonce. Uh, so to knock her off the charts was a was a big accomplishment for my family and I. But uh, just crazy. I, n I never like thought this day would would be a reality. It's pretty well, iconic. Yeah, it is iconic. But you now have the opportunity, Benson, to do something even more iconic, in my opinion, right? Because you released another single yesterday mm -hmm. called "Slow It Down." Yeah. Now, do you want that song to go number one next week? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking in two weeks. In two yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Just I don't want to. I don't want to rush it. You know. <laughs> you know. I'm Save thinking too. Yeah. Well, well look, a lot of people as well really excited the fact that you've got a world tour coming up. Uh, now, the name for this, right? Mm. Fireworks and rollerblades. Yes. It sold out in an in an hour, but I'm more worried about the health and safety. <laughs> how many fireworks and how many actual rollerblades are we going to see? <laughs> The world truly will never know. I don't know, actually. Okay. Uh, we're, we're still, I kind of just like to play things by ear, so we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully not too many fireworks, because I, I don't think that would go well. No. That part. No. But the rollerblades would. Yeah, I can imagine the insurance policy instantly being yeah. going. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, don't know. Uh, and, and of course, also the album. Exactly, well, the about. album. How excited are you about that? Because oh. it's still a big body of work just to share with everybody, right? Yeah, I'm, this is, so this is my first album, mm. uh, and I'm, I'm very excited to have it out in the world. Um, I'm very proud of, of the songs and the records uh, that are a part of it, so truly, like, I'm actually so excited. The most excited I've ever been to release something. Have you done a vinyl, vinyl one? I vinyl did, edition? I did a vinyl actually, uh, my first vinyl like cool. two weeks ago. So they, they just came out. That's but exciting. Got it pressed, it's out there. Fantastic. Ready to go. Well, yeah. Benson, I'm going to yeah. call you B. We're going to call you B. We're, <laughs> we're familiar call me, now. Call me B. B, call me B. Um, you're going to be performing for us later on in the show, your first ever UK performance. Um, so beautiful, beautiful things will be happening at the end. We look forward. Yeah, very good. Now, A lot of love is also coming through for our guests tonight. Hello to Wendy, who says, the casting in Beyond Paradise is superb. Everything about it makes our household smile. Oh, oh yeah. So good. Very nice. So beautiful. Well, look, that's almost it for tonight. Thank you to all of our our guests. Yeah, Alex and JJ will be back on Monday, but now to take us into the weekend, performing beautiful things, it's the brilliant Benson Boo. <laughs> For a while there it was rough, but lately I've been doing better than the last four cold Decembers I recall. And I see my family every month I found a girl my parents love She'll come and stay the night And I think I might have it all 
And I thank God every day For the girl he sent my way But I know the things he gives me He can take away Oh, and I hold you every night And that's a feeling I want to get used to But there's no man as terrified It's the man who stands to lose you Please stay I want you, I need you, oh God Don't take these beautiful things that I've got Please stay I want you, I need you, oh God On my mind, but I'm feeling sane. It's been a while, but I'm finding my faith. If everything's good and it's great, why do I sit and wait till it's gone? Oh, I tell you, I know I've got enough. I've got peace and I've got love. But I'm up at night thinking I just might lose it all. Things that I've got